guys Today we will have a look at how the drum root from Arturia can work with VCV rack We will start by syncing them to one another and then processing some sounds in VCV rack and using the drum root as a sequencer Let's start! Okay, so first of all, I want to thank my Patreons for their support. Thank you guys so, so much. It means a lot to me. And I want to thank also Arturia for sending me the drum root so I can check it out and see how it can work together with VCV Rec. So the drum root is an analog drum machine that has 17 different instruments, each with its own track that are spread through 12 channels with individual outputs. So we can process individual instruments in VCV Rec. We will see this also later in the video. We have also a very interesting and intuitive sequencer which allows us to build whole songs and add randomness also to individual channels and we can also set different sequence lengths to each of the instruments and create crazy polyrhythmic sequences. But let's really start with having a look at how we can sync the drum root with VCV Rec. Okay, so first of all, let's see how we can make the drum root as the master clock and we will start with using MIDI. I have here the MIDI module and it's already set up to my MIDI interface and of course it will work also when connecting the drum root through the USB cable. On the MIDI module we have two clock outputs and in the right click menu we can choose um, the clock resolution for each of the clocks. So let's start by sending the first clock to the BPM input of our um, clock in VCV rack and in this case I'm using clocked from impromptu which is great when working with external gear. Let's um, change the clock resolution again in the right click menu to 24 ppqn and choose the same also on clocked. We can choose this by clicking the mode buttons. So I have here p24 and let's start the drum root. I have here a simple kick four on the floor and you can see that the that clocked is synced. It's not so stable, although it's not really noticeable. For example, I have here a bass drum also in VCV. So you can hear that they are sitting together. I can change the BPM on the drum root. It will change also in VCV rack. If I stop the drum root, also um, clocked stopped. So we have the drum root as the master clock. Now we can also use the actual analog output, the clock output of the drum root, and this will be actually more stable. I have the clock output going to my audio interface and it's worth mentioning that my audio interface is not DC coupled. So this should work with any audio interface. And now let's send this clock to our scope. I have it coming out from output 3 in this case. Let's run the drum root. And you can see that we have the clock signal. We have here a square wave. Now this should go to the BPM input of clocked. So let's take the MIDI out and send this also to the MIDI input. And you can see that we have the uh, clock going a bit um, crazy because, let's just stop this, because we have to amplify the signal be before it's going to clock so it can work um, um, right with it. So I have here an amplify, um, amplifier module. Let's send the signal first to the amplifier module, take the volume or the level all the way up and then send it to clocked. And now when I start the drum root, you can see that it's perfectly in sync. I can change the BPM. 148, also 148 on clocked. Very nice. And again, um, make sure that you select the right clock resolution, which in this case, it's still 24 PPQN. And you can change this in the MIDI control center. 
And now let's see how we can make VCVREC as the master clock. And first of all, in the upcoming release of VCVREC 1.0, it will be possible also to send out MIDI, so you could sync it that way with MIDI, but again, there are chances that it will not be so stable like we've seen before. But we can also send the actual clock out of VCVREC and sync the drum route that way. One thing to keep in mind though, you will need to have an extra output on your audio interface so the clock signal will not go through your mix. So I have here a cable connected to the clock input of the drum root, and again it's set to 24 ppqn, so we will send the clock multiplied by 24 to the drum root. Let's just take the, this signal out, and this will go, in my case, it's input number 3. Let's change the sync option here on the drum root to clock. Clocked in VCV rec is stopped. Let's hit play on the drum root and you can see that it's waiting for an external clock signal. It will not run until we don't send the signal to the clock input. And now let's start clocked in VCV rec. Very nice. And you can see that the drum root is playing with VCVREC again, I will stop the clock, stop the drum root, hit play again, it will wait for a signal, I will hit run on clocked. Now I can change also the BPM, we have 157 uh, uh, in VCVREC, 157 on the drum root. So now VCVREC is the master clock controlling the drum root. Okay, so this was syncing the drum root with VCVREC, and now let's start processing some sounds. Okay, so here we have the drum root, and here we have VCVREC. I have already the uh, drum root going to the mixer. Very nice, through the mix output, so all of the different voices go to the same um, channel. Let's go back to the drum root and start building us a sequence. If you know my music, if you know my uh, channel, my videos, you know how much I love polyrhythms. So let's start with this. Holding shift, step number 16, we activate polyrhythm mode. Let's hit play. Let's change the BPM, let's say 124, let's say. And now let's start with a kick. Let's say a seven step sequence. Very nice. Let's go with the second kick also. Let's go with 12 steps and we will make, let's say, 1, 5 and 8. Can start playing with the sounds of it. Add some click maybe. Very nice. Okay, snare. Maybe less of a snap. Let's see. Less step. Let's go with nine and let's say one, three, six. Oh yeah. Okay, very cool. Now, what else do we want? Let's say a closed hi-hat. Now here we have two hi-hats. We have closed and open, but they are the same. So this is the closed one. This is the open one. So what I will do, I will switch between them. I will use the open hat as a closed hi-hat and the closed hat as an open one because the closed one will choke the open hat. So if I have something like this, So let's switch between them. So the um, open hat will uh, chalk the closed one. So let's do something like this. And now to record, uh, I want 16 notes. I, order, um, I have to um, click and hold the pad and just let's say 16. I record 16 notes. 
Very nice. We can add also, let's say, some ratcheting to step number 13. So I click and hold step number 13 and add, let's say, eighth note. Oh yeah. We can also add some swing just to this um, channel, just to the closed hat, current track. Oh yeah. Okay, so we have a nice sequence. Let's go back to VCV rec. And what I like, <laughs> I really like doing this. Let's take Rampage from Befaco and add some character to the sound, add some distortion. Let's go with Rampage, very nice. And let's send um, the same signal, so the mixed, also to Rampage. And now from the rising and falling trigger outputs or gate outputs, let's add a scope also, let's see. So we can see this, we will get something like this. You see, we'll just get gates. And this will add a lot of character to the sound. So let's send the rising to another channel. Let's listen to this. Oh yeah. We can change the character also with the rise. And fall times. add some reverb on this, maybe take the lows high air uh, out. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Okay, well, let's see, let's add uh, the open head. So now, again, because I have it on the closed head, which will choke the open one, I have them switched. Let's just go back to, to the drum root. So I have them switched, which means that now the open head will choke the closed one. So let's go with another polyrhythm. Let's go with 10 steps and have it on the five. Or maybe let's go with 14 steps. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, let's see what's with the clap. Let's go with, uh, let's say, 32 steps and let's have it on the first step. Oh yeah. And now what we can do, we can take just the clap sound out of the mix. So all what we have to do, I have here a cable that I will connect to the individual clap output, which is here. So let's do this. So now, oh, it's a lower one, sorry, no. So now it's not going any way out of the mix. It's going through its own output. That's why we cannot hear it. And now let's go back to VCV. So now it will come out of output number two. Let's see, let's uh, listen to this. So this is our clap. Very nice. And now what we can do, let's say I want a delay just on this clap. So let's go with all right devices, um, Chrono Blob 2. 
And let's send this um, clap first to Chronoblob and have a stereo signal. I will have a ping pong delay. Let's send this like this. And now what we can do, we can add from the core modules, we can add the MIDI one module. Again, we've seen it before. Um, we can use the clock of the drum root. So I will choose the drum root in my MIDI interface. And now the clock one will go to the sync input, input of a Chronoblob. So now Chronoblob will be synced with the clock of the drum root. Oh yeah. Let's see what we can do. Let's add the Briatus from Vult, which has also a saturation. Um, knob, which is here. So let's send this first through the Briatus and add some, saturate the sound a bit, raise the volume also. Oh yeah. Oh yes! We can also do this with the hi-hats. So let's go back to the drum root. And let's take the hi-hats also out. I have here another cable. And let's go with the hat. So now the hats are going out of their own output. So what we have here now is just a snare and the two kicks from the mix output. So let's go back to VCV. And now what we can do, let's move this shortly here. And now it will come out of output three, the heads. And let's use sample and hold. So I will use, let's say, um, kinks for mutable instruments or utilities from audible instruments. I will trigger the sample and hold with a multiplied by 16 note. And now I do this we have two clock outputs like we've seen before and in the right click menu I can choose the clock resolution and I can see that um, the uh, clock 2 is outputting 16 notes. This is exactly what I want. And now this can go and modulate the panning of the Hyatt. Very cool. So now we have also modulation on the Hyatt. Okay, now what else we can do? Let's say that I want whenever the snare is playing, I want also to have some sort of melody. Let's go back shortly to the drum boot. So anyway, any every time the snare is playing, I want also to have some sort of melody playing in VCV rack. So I wanted the snare sound will trigger a sequencer in VCV rack. So let's go back to VCV rack. And now here, what we can do, we can use again in the core modules, we have the MIDI trigger module, which will output triggers according to the um, pads or to the sequencer we have in the drum root. So let's again choose our MIDI interface. And now, we have here, this will be um, trigger one, two, and three. 
So I have here trigger 1, 2 and 3, from here there should come out the snare trigger. So let's use a sequencer, I will use Entropia from the Geodesics, which is an amazing sequencer. I will send this output to the clock input. And if we solo just the snare, we can see that the sequencer will run together with the snare. Very cool, so let's change the patterns a bit, we have here an 8 step sequence, let's change the um, sequence. I would add also some random notes here and there. If you want to know more about Entropia, I will put a link in the description to a video I made about it. And now let's take a quantizer so we can quantize this signal. Very good, let's go with C, E flat, G, B flat. And now let's uh, choose a voice. I will choose, um, let's go with the FM operator from Bog Audio. Let's see if I can find it. Very nice. Activate the gate or the level envelope so I can have something nice and percussive. Let's send the signal to the FM operator, also the gate. Now let's have a listen. change the values here a bit. Add some reverb. Unsolo everything. Very cool. So now we can play with this a bit. Oh yeah. Okay, now what else can we do? Let's say, let's add another voice here. Let's go with another polyrhythm. Let's go with five steps. Let's see what with the maracas. What we can also do, we can also record an um, unquantized sequence. So let's, um, with clicking and holding shift and hitting the record button, and now I can record an unquantized signus, uh, sequence for this voice. Can add another voice here, the tambourine, with a different channel, so a different sequence. Let's go again with 32 steps. And let's, no, you know what, let's go with something different. Let's go with 30 steps, let's say. Oh yeah.
change the sequence for the maracas. Let's do something like this maybe. Oh yeah. Okay, now what else can we do? We can also send, let's say I don't want to use this is Zep sound, so what I can do, I just take it out of the mix, but I can still use this as a sequencer, a whole sequencer for VCV rack. And what we can do, we can also split this sequence, sort of a Stevio style sequence. If you know Stevio is making it a lot, he has a sequencer. And um, let's say he has a seven step sequence and he's splitting the seven steps between two different voices. So let's go back to VCV rack. And let's see how we can do something like this in VCV rec. Let's just make here uh, maybe some space. Let's put um, everything here. And they can put the sample and hold all the way there. The trigger module we will use now. So let's do something like this. First of all, let's create, I will go back shortly to the drum board. Let's create a sequence to the Zep sound. Let's use again a seven step sequence and I will go with one, three, five, and six. Okay, now you cannot hear it because the level is down if. This is how it will sound like. But I don't want this sound, I want to use this channel as a sequence in VCV rec. So let's go back to VCV. Very nice. So now let's stop the sequence for a second and I can assign this sequence to the MIDI trigger. Let's go with the last slot. I just click it and it goes to learn mode. I hit this pad and now this last slot um, is being, uh, um, it's now assigned to, to the ZEP knob. Let's, to the ZEP pad. Let's bring the sequence back. And now in order to split the sequences, we will use a sequential switch. I will use the one from ML. A sequential switch, let's use this one. One to eight. So I will send the sequence to the sequential switch. I will change the sequential switch to seven steps because this is what we have. And now we'll use two different voices. Let's start with plats. Um, again, mutable instruments or the macro oscillator two from audible instruments. Let's change this to chord mode. Very nice. And now we'll use trigger, a few different triggers um, to trigger plats. I will use Umix, which is a Unity mixer from Bog Audio. So I can mix a few different outputs and I will mix one, let's say, and let's say also five. One and five. Very nice. And this will go to trigger plats. Let's send this to the mixer, see how it sounds like. And now we will run the sequential switch with the same sequence. So now we split the sequence, the seven step sequence. And for now we are just sending it to plats. Let's add some reverb on this. We can change the chord. And now we can send the second splitted sequence. So we have step three, and six. So let's have another Unity mixer. Three and six. And we will send this, we will create a sort of a bass sound. So let's add the palm loop oscillator from 21 kilohertz. I will add the VCA. This one is from AS. And I will add also a filter. Let's use tangents from Vult. Nice. 
let's take a sawtooth wave to tangents to the VCA and also a sine wave. This sine wave will be one octave lower than the sawtooth wave. This will go directly to the VCA. Let's use an envelope generator, an ADSR. Although we have um, we have rampage here, we can use also rampage for this. So I will take output B of rampage to the VCA. And I will trigger um, this rampage with the same um, sequence that we just splitted. And now this can go to the mixer. I will use two different channels of the mixer. I don't want a stereo signal in this case. Very nice. Let's have a bit more release. Let's solo this. Take it one octave down. A bit more resonance. Let's cut off. A bit more release. So now we've splitted. We've splitted the zap or this channel, let's say, the sequence from this channel in VCV rack to two different voices. Let's add some reverb on this tangents voice. Oh yeah. Let's see what with the toms here. Let's go back to Oh yeah, with the distortion it sounds amazing. Also the symbol. Let's choose again 32 steps and have it on step. Oh yeah. Now everything that goes through the mix output is also going through this filter, the Steiner Parker filter. So let's and bypass it. And this is just what's going out of the mix output, so not this, the claps and not the heads. Can add some resonance. can have also a high pass filter. We have also the strip here that we can create some ratcheting. Oh yeah. So again, let's have a short look what's going on in VCV rack. You can see I'm not using even a clock in VCV rack, I'm just using the clock coming out of the MIDI module, everything sits nice together. I can process the different sounds, I can add more sequences. I can 
control everything with the sequencer of the drum boot. Okay guys, and that was it. That was using the drum boot with VCV Rack. This was really, really fun. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you enjoy what I do, please consider becoming a Patreon. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and hit the bell. And have a good one.